Hi, this is Daniel, and let's talk about making fast slideshows in Premiere Pro. So, full disclaimer, I've created an extension called Swift Slides that I think is the fastest and easiest way to create slideshows in Premiere Pro. And let's have a quick look at that method now. So, in Icon View, we can actually arrange the images by user order. Uh, I'll select the first image and press Ctrl A to select everything. Now I've already created a sequence, a HD sequence. So let's drag all these in. In Swiss slides, we can just change our settings. So I want to fill the screen. Also want some random zoom. I'll change that to 15%. I won't worry about transitions. Then we just select everything and click Swift slides. And after a few moments, that'll tell us it's 1.82 seconds long for each slide. Great. Now, the beautiful thing about Swiss slides is, say we want to add some more music. So I'll just grab another track. And maybe some footage as well. Move all these along. Back in some footage. Now, if we had to redo this manually, it takes quite a long time. But in Swiss slides, we can just click again. And that'll automatically fit to the music. So now each slide is 4.11 seconds. And of course, we can also add multiple transitions. So I'll just make some added dissolved, band slide, let's go dip to black, dip to white, select everything. And I'll randomize the order of the slides this time. Click again. That'll go through. Done again. You can see the zoom if I just mute this audio. See the zoom is going in and out too. That's random. So it'll be a random amount up to a maximum of 15% and we can add random pan. All right, let's have a look at the manual method and I'll try to give some tips for that as well. So I'll delete all these slides. So the first thing you're going to have to do is work out how long each slide should be. I can see we've got 48 slides in this folder and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we've got a time code of 3 minutes, 23 seconds and 14 frames. So we're going to have to whip out a calculator. And 3 minutes times 60, bring back some mass. That's 180 seconds plus 23 seconds. So 203 seconds, but we've got this 14 frames. And to work that out, we're going to have to go 14 divided by the frame rate, which I know in this sequence is 25 frames per second. So 0 0.56 plus our 203. I'm pretty sure, yep, 203 that we had before. And we need to divide that by the number of slides, so divided by 48. So we're left with 4.24 seconds per slide. A lot of people will say you need to go up to Edit, Preferences, Timeline, and then when that opens, we can change the still image duration to 4.24, I think it was. But there is actually an easier way, so I'll just cancel that. You can actually select all the images you want to change and then go to Speed Duration. And in here, we need to type in the duration. Of course, this is in time code again. Uh, for example, if I change that to 3, now you can see each image is 3 seconds and 2 frames. And we're going to have to convert that 0.24 back to frames. So back to my calculator, I go 0 0.24 times my frame rate, 25 frames per second, is 6. So 6 frames. So I'll go to speed and duration. And I'll change this to 4 seconds and 6 frames. 
Now I can drag all these in and it's pretty close. So we could select everything and click set to frame size. I like to use set to frame size instead of scale to frame size because set to frame size, if I just select an image here and go to effect controls, it actually changes the scale value. Whereas if I change this back to 100%, see if I select scale to frame size, it leaves the scale value at 100 but actually changes the size of the image, which can get a bit confusing and mess some things up for me. They're all set to the frame size. Problem is, if I want to fill the screen, I'm going to have to go through manually and scale these up until they fill the screen. One automatic way of filling the frame is to use the effect auto reframe. So I've got a few clips here. You can just select those three clips, drag auto reframe, and that'll, as its name suggests, automatically try to reframe the clip to fill the screen. The downside of this is it disables the motion and you can't keyframe the scale. They don't have any keyframes on them at the moment. So what I could do to get some hand and zoom is say create a new adjustment layer, leave all the settings the same as the sequence, drag that actually before I drag that in, I'll call that zoom in. I'll drag this zoom in on top and select that adjustment layer. Now we need to add the transform effect, which is in the distort in video effects. So I'll drag that onto there. Now in the transform effect, we can just scroll down, create a keyframe for 100%. Let's say we want to go to 110%. And I'll just drag that to the end. Now we have a slow zoom in effect. And the great thing about being adjustment layer is I can just drag that onto Alt. I'm holding Alt to click and drag that onto other clips. Now all of these clips will have slight zoom ins, even if we change the scale so that it fits. I actually have to start that one at the beginning. Now I can hold control for fine adjustments. So now this will zoom in from the start to the finish. And if we wanted, we could actually select that transform effect and save it as a preset and choose type scale, which means the effect or the keyframe scale according to the size of the, the length of the clip which is pretty helpful. Um, but I find just having that on an adjustment layer in this case is easy enough. So I'll duplicate the adjustment layer. I'll go back to my image folder and let's duplicate that and we'll call this zoom out. And of course you can do the opposite thing. So just quickly do that. We'll go back to effects, add the transform effect scale and this time we'll go from 110 to 100 and i find i like to create my keyframes like that because then it's easier just to move them to the ends when you go to the end of a clip it see how that just kind of jumped between clips and then you have to go back and select the right clip so it's just what i like to do of course we haven't got transitions uh, so one thing we can do with transitions is select everything and control D will add the default transition, which is a cross dissolve. In my case, we can change the tra default transition. So you can go to dissolve. Say we want to change it to dip to white. We can right click and go set selected as default. And now we can select multiple clips and control D and it'll change the transitions between the selected clips. So you need to select more than one clip to dip to wire. Um, but of course, what if we forgot an image or suddenly we need to add in footage? Oh no, that's just messed up everything. Uh, so then we'd have to go back through the process and 
Now we've got a different duration or different number. We've got 49 instead of 48 images. Um, and recalculate and redo all that again. One other way of doing automated edits is to use markers. And I'll just place... I'm just going to lock this layer so I don't place markers on the layer. But I want to place markers in the sequence. And I'll just place markers quickly. All right, I've just placed some markers on the music. Let's zoom in on this. You can see at the start, I've just tapped along with the beat, this section of the music. Gets faster. So we can select some images. So just go back to the top, select, say, select these images. And there's a special button down here called Automate to Sequence. If I click that, you'll get this option to change the ordering so we want to use the selection order instead of placement sequentially we want to place them at the unnumbered markers and use the in and out range so let's click ok there we go that each of those images has been placed at the marker i didn't quite have enough images there so i'll go to this last image and I'll select some more just select all of these and click again click OK that's great so that's great for specific timing you can just use markers and then automate to sequence of course then we're going to have to uh, go back through and set to frame size again or manually scale up each image so that it fills the frame uh, and go through that process so hopefully that's helpful as i mentioned earlier i have created swift slides as an extension to help take out a lot of the pain of creating slideshows like this for more information please see the link in the description otherwise enjoy making slideshows